Hello, geeks and gamers, and welcome back to Resident Evil. In the last episode, we uh, awoke as Jill. Um, or was that in the first episode? Oh gosh, I'm forgetting. Anyway, as Jill, we explored a bit more of the hospital. Um, pretty sure that's what it was, is that we woke up, we are exploring... The hospital, we kind of went back through and unlocked all of the boxes that were there um, that we couldn't when we went through as Carlos. And then we came into the underground section, uh, a path that only Jill could take because it was locked behind um, a padlocked door. Um, as we got into the underground section, we came across Nikolai, who is now pretty much ferreting, ferreting us. Down the path that he wants us to go as we are collecting fuses to get a lift working again. So we are pretty much just playing Nikolai's game now. And look, the safe room. I didn't mean to save on the second one, but whatever. So, in that episode, we did collect two of the three. Um, and now we're going to collect the third. And get that lift operational again. What do we got? Some more gunpowder. Ooh, out of the air. Sit down, boy. Oh, here we are. Uh, shit. That was helpful. Whatever. Okay. All right, here goes. And now we've got to make our way back. Making our way downtown. Let's go ahead and, you know, might as well pop another save. I saved 29 times. I'm sure there's a mode in which, you know, like it, you only get a certain amount of saves. Um, like Dead Space. No, oh, he's no longer there. That's why I was chilling up there. Oh, fuck me. It's really rude. I shot all of you guys just to make sure. Reload, bitch. Ow. Oh. There went all that ammo. Makes sense that he would have left. Oh yeah. What's he doing in here? He said definitely would make sense that he would leave. He knew we were coming. Yes. But how that? Why not? Yeah, I'm sure there's a game mode where it's like you only have a certain amount of saves. That's uh, that's pretty classic survival horror. 
Unfinished Activity Log, 926 1300. Infiltrated RC. Disturbances are sporadic. Commencing mission. 1930. Observed five RPD officers engaged a pack of 20 strong officers annihilated in 20 minutes. 927 1200. Test run at university. Diverted pack. Uh, in I don't know what that means. Canines to campus. 64% infection and conversion in two hours. No survivors. 2300. Successful rendezvous with MV Platoon. Will make first attempt at dawn. 928. 0430. Diverted pack toward command post. Result night skirmish in confined area with large number of combatants. Video attached. 0800. End of skirmish. Seven survivors. 1800. Unknown bioweapon deployed at point D18. Tracking it per orders, it appears to be on the hunt. 2000. Got eyes on two stars a male infected and a female. Bioweapon is pursuing the female. Uh, 929. Uh, female JV has made contact with the MV platoon. Bioweapon's appearance and behavior are consistent with Project N investigating. 0400. Observed by a weapon wielding conventional weapons. It seemed to be strongly fixated on terminating Jill JV, J Val, Jin, Jill Valentine, and knows the city layout. Evidence it can be imprinted. 0700. Metamorphosis in the bioweapon triggered by a hostile encounter with JV. Video attached. JV has been infected and is non responsive. Collected samples per orders. 930. At 030 hours. Over 17 hours have elapsed since Jill Valentine's exposure to virus. Conversion has been slow, suggesting she may be resistant. 0400. Vaccine recovered and administered to JV by CO, a, a soldier in MV platoon. JV expected to be fit for combat approximately 20 hours post-exposure. It seems clear that bioweapon is Project N. Contact with JV causes it to change and evolve. Will induce further encounters... Uh, to obtain more precise data. Joe. Tyrell. I got He's infected, isn't he? They're willing to negotiate. Ah. They'll call out the strike if. And this is one big ass if we can deliver the vaccine to them before they launch. <laughs> How long do we have? Hours. About five Maybe. minutes. Then let's not waste one more second. This way. Matt, nah, this dude is completely infected. Come on, Jill. We'll find the vaccine up ahead. Where is Carlos? You know what this room reminds me of? The first Resident Evil movie room with all the, uh, the lasers. Sure you don't need to stop? Stop and do what? I got your back. Which was like the only good Resident done. Evil movie, honestly. And is it just me? Or did they it seem like they loosely based Meliovich on Joe Valentine? <sighs> Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, let's shoot him with a goddamn pistol. No! Keep going, we're almost there. Nope. No! Go! Go! I mean, I'm sure he was infected anyway, but... Shit! Sewer. Now that's a Dark Souls 2 boss. And a bitch of a one at that. Okay. Okay. 
safe room. Nice, nice. Uh, just hold off on that. Gotta do me some saving. What do we got here? Nest 2 Employee Regulations. Attention, Nest2 employees. The objective of the T-Virus Research Facility differ from those of Umbrella's main Nest facility. Here we focus on real-world use ca cases which arise as new bioweapons are created and introduced, such as a need for T-Virus vaccines and new weaponry capable of suppressing bioweapons. Some aspects of our work here can be dangerous, so it is imperative that all employees adhere to workplace regulations without fail. In particular, unauthorized entry by unapproved visitors or the removal of work-related data or materials will be met with severe disciplinary measures. It is a great honor to be a part of the finest research organization in the world. Keep this in mind and stick to the rules as we forge new and revolutionary technologies. Ooh, I got a map. Um, the map, um, the map. I don't think he liked that very much. I'm sorry, she. My apologies. Where are you, he? <sighs> Difficult to tell. No, please. Don't get up on my account. Ooh, shotgun shells. Ooh, what do you have for me, buddy? Isaac Graves' diary. The pay was generous, the benefits were good. Most importantly, they promised me I'd be contributing to the to state-of-the-art medical tech research. For a university teacher stuck working in nowhere America, it was a golden opportunity, like winning the lottery. So I went for it. I made the pitch to my family, and we agreed to move here to Racco Raccoon City. Well, hindsight is twenty twenty, because this lab is a den of monsters who conduct cruel and barbaric experiments for the sole purpose of taking human life in the most sickening way possible. It's messed up. The world needs to know. But every time I work up enough courage to blow the whistle, I think of Penny and Casey and immediately chicken out. Umbrella owns this town. There was this guy they caught trying to smuggle out company secrets. They essentially fed him to one of the betas. Fed him. I saw the whole thing. I got my wife and daughter into this. I just needed to do my job. Do as I'm told, for their sake. But this, but let this be the testament that I do have a conscience, and that I've learned my lesson. <sighs> Sorry, buddy. Tough break. I'm sorry, I was taking a drink of water. I wasn't deliberately walking into a wall, I just couldn't move the other stick. No, wait a miss. Okay. It's it's not gonna get up. I think. Let's check over here first. Some more gunpowder. They really like giving you that handgun ammo. Actually, how much ammo do I have for my shotgun? 37 rounds? Heh. I guess I can rock out with the shotgun for a bit. To begin vaccine synthesis, place the materials in the chamber. I don't... I don't have materials. Says, I have to make it myself? <sighs> Alright, gotta figure this out. Essay on vaccine synthesis. On the roles of, of antigens in adju adjuvants. 
and vaccine synthesis, Dr. Nathaniel Bard, chief researcher, Spencer Memorial Hospital. The most efficiently to most efficiently synthesize a vaccine, both an antigen and an, ad, an adjuvant are required. The antigen produces an immune response, while the adjuvant increases the effects of such responses, leading to increased antibody production. By combining samples of these two ingredients, we can create a potent vaccine base. By processing this base with our proprietary equipment, a larger batch of vaccine can be created with an astonishing ease. What's more, my latest antigen and adjuvant samples yield unprecedented rates of antibody production, producing more than 1,000 times the yield of traditional materials. This not only makes it an effective vaccine, but also a potential way to eliminate existing infections. And if they continue to remake these, as we will find out, Jill is used in those antivirus um, cases in the future. Bye. Wesker. Touch. Override key successfully generated. What have we here? An override key. Were you not listening, Jill? Removed. It's a big ass flash drive. And I don't have room for it. Fuck. Probably just a little walk path. Yeah, okay. So now we probably have to go back down. So there was the uh, other room back this way. Oh, wait. I don't think I'd come into here yet. Had I? Huh. Maybe I had. Yeah, yeah, this is the door that I need. Another one coming down that stairs. Oh, it's a regenerator. Oh, Jesus. Just two for me. You shouldn't have. What was upstairs? Probably one of the uh, things that I need. Oh, an antigen sample. I'll definitely need this. For Sit your ass down. Nobody told you you can get up. Weaponry authorization request, dear Doctor Emerson. Emerson. I would like to formally request that the weaponry normally reserved for the Bioware Synthesis team be made available for all for any employees interfacing with the admission and dismissal of test subjects. These test subjects do not present the same levels of danger as our bioweapons produ products, but I believe that this weaponry authorization is advisable as outlined below. Recently, some test subjects have developed a new mutagen granting them very high regrowth abilities. We, our team refers to these specimens as paleheads. 
They have been appearing with regularity, but the specific cause has not yet been determined. The astonishing rate at which these pale heads regenerate makes it difficult to deliver a lethal blow with standard weaponry. If any sort of system failure were to occur within our facility, we would woefully be we would be woefully underprepared to defend ourselves. For this reason, I would like to request a high-powered weaponry capable of subduing the pale heads be issued to all of our employees working in shipping and processing. This will ensure that in in the event of an emergency, we will be able to quickly eliminate the threat and evacuate safely. Thank you so much for your consideration, Shipping and Processing Manager Gabrielle Reed. Well, Gabrielle. I hope you got the things you need. Probably didn't, though. Okay. So, glad I came up there. Got one of the two things that I needed. They are really giving you that gunpowder. What was that? That's oh, a box. What's in the box? Eh. Anything useful back here? This must be what powers it. No. Failed, uh, failed experiments, it would seem. of concern. Senior Fellow Dr. Frankel, please allow me to send my heartfelt congratulations to you and your colleagues at Umbrella Europe for completing Nemesis, a truly remarkable achievement in the field of bioweapons research, introducing a parasitic organism into Tyrant's brain to gain extra control of it. How can I not marvel at such a wild idea? However, from a medical perspective, I must emphatically state my disapproval of this shift away from established umbrella policy. By turning the use of, of the, to the parasites, you are setting a dangerous precedent. Viruses can be kept in check. I believe an effective vaccine can be developed for any virus on Earth. Yet, yeah, sell that to COVID-19. With an abundant funding of a bounty of samples, of course. Can you say the same for parasites, however? 
Doctors have tried in vain to develop a vaccine for malaria. Parasites, like plasmodium, are far, for, are far more genetically complex than the T-virus, and to think they will submit to control is utter fallacy. Perhaps, in your country, consumers are willing to buy automobiles with no brakes, but here in America, they know better. <laughs> Do they? Then again, I recall you have a degree in economics, so no doubt you've already devised a brilliant marketing strategy to win over the naysayers. I look forward to your talk at the forum in Berlin next month. In the meantime, I shall be exploring medical solutions to this hubristic problem you foisted on us. Sincerely, Nathaniel Bard, PhD. So it's called the Nemesis. Oh, hi. Wait, how did she draw that conclusion? She had no way. And I guess she just was like, oh, he seems kind of parasitic, I guess. An adjuvant sample. These are combined with antigens to increase immune system response. Okay, so I think I've got both things that I need. Head on back. Just checking where the safe room is again. So we're hitting at about that time. And unfortunately, I'm not continuing to play immediately. We knew that was going to happen. But here I am running my ass blindly through. I think I got my trusty shotgun. All right. But yes, I'm not continuing immediately because, as stated in the last video, it's my daughter's birthday, so we're going to go to her birthday party as much as we can have, because coronavirus stuff's still happening. Anyway, I digress. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to do all of those things that YouTubers ask you to do. And as always, game on.